Hello, welcome back to Watches First. Today we are going to go over this truck. It's a 2012 Chevrolet Colorado. Now the new Colorado has seemingly given the entire generation of the Colorado a bad name. So because of that, I decided to figure out just how reliable is this truck. To better educate you about your ride or your future purchase. Let's get started. We gotta start with the most noteworthy issue, and that's on the N95 motor, and that's the valve seats. The valve seats within the head of the N95 motor can become damaged due to the guides becoming loose and making the car run rough, cause misfires, and potentially illuminate the check engine light. Now, if the valves break completely, it could ultimately tear up the entire engine. The fix you ask? Well, you can replace the entire head with a more durable one, which is what GM recommends, or you can simply get the stock head repaired with new valve guides, seats, and a fresh valve job from a machine shop. There is a pass lock security issue. This truck is basically not recognizing the OEM key. The truck would crank but won't start up due to its anti-theft system. When this first happens, you are supposed to turn the key on to the on position for 10 minutes, then turn the key off, then back on, and you'll be hoping that the car recognizes the key. And you can attempt this for up to 20 minutes. However, the typical solution is installing a new ignition lock cylinder, which costs around $90, but requires you to pull the steering wheel to replace it. Or you could go pull just the sensor from another truck at the junkyard and hope it works properly. The sensor just requires you to move the plastic cover underneath the steering wheel and remove the sensor with two screws. Sadly, the sensor is not sold separately new. If it was, it would make this issue a whole lot nicer. Yeah, you got a point. Then, whenever you do that, you have to do a 30 minute learning procedure with a new sensor. So pause the video if you need to look over this. The front drive shaft is known to be one of the weaker links within these trucks. Upgrading it with a performance aftermarket replacement would be a good idea. You could replace the boot of the drive shaft, which is pretty straightforward and requires you to move a total of eight bolts to remove the shaft, spice the boot open, and remove the snap ring to install the new CV joint. Or you could order an upgraded drive shaft that won't break from Rocky Mountain Driveline. If you're off-roading, this is the option you should go with. And I'll link all the products down below for your convenience. Like most older vehicles, you should check all down the frame for rust. Last thing you want is your truck snapping in half on the highway. Are you having electrical issues that you just don't understand? And you don't have any pop fuses? Well, it might be an issue with one of the two grounding splice packs. SP-105 is located on the driver's side and SP-106 is located on the passenger side behind the engine airbox. Seems that SP-106 causes most of the issues. Depending which issue you have, you can determine further which spice pack you need to tackle. Pause the video if you need to look at this any longer as well. You'll most likely need to clean up the connections and the grounding spot or bolt. Chevy decided to put all the grounding connections into these two spice packs. So if one goes bad, all those connections can start getting kind of wonky. So make sure everything has a nice clean contact. If you opt for the 5.3 flex fuel variant, those engines are known to drop lifters, which can cause major damage if not properly taken care of immediately. Best option is to do an AFM delete, which is not an easy thing to do. However, it beats a blown engine. Other miserable issues, the fuel pump can fail, which is typical of any vehicle. However, there have been more than average reports of this happening with this truck. The fuel level sensor can also read incorrectly, and that's located on top of the fuel pump as well. Removing the truck bed with its four bolts seems to be the easiest way to get to the pump, which is located in the fuel tank. The brake light switches fails, is very easy to get to, and is as easy as unplugging the unit and plugging it back in. Once again, the parts and how-to videos are linked below. There are many, many of these trucks still on the road and with very high miles. The N95 is known to last 250,000 miles. However, if I wanted this 
tire mounts, truck to feel like new. I do paste the cab to body mounts, engine mounts, front suspension, carrier bearing, and the rear leaf springs. And once again, these trucks are very reliable. And although I pointed out all these common issues, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that your truck will have these issues. Just a few things to watch out for. This is Crystal Automotive, here to motivate you to get into cars, no matter your gender, the way you speak, or the color of your hair. It doesn't matter. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you in the next video.